Hey, there you are. So you'll find out if you should get the binocular goggles over the box goggles. If you have the box goggles, you're probably seeing everyone with the fat sharks and wanting the, this kind of look and being a little bit more professional, if you will. Um, it is pretty attractive. Um, box goggles have always been seen as kind of the beginner uh, type of goggle, which, which they are. And the value is very good on these. So we're looking at, right now, this is the Kylin Vision, which at the time I got for about 100 bucks, maybe three years ago. And this, and today they're about $50 versus about 360, 380 for these Skyzone O2Cs. So we're talking uh, quite a bit more uh, for the binocular goggles. So the differences um, you're gonna wanna know about as, as kind of a beginner. So in the beginning you're gonna want, you may think you want a very large screen, similar to like when you're searching for a big screen TV for your house. You just wanna really be immersed into it. You know, the bigger the better, 65 inch in your living room. Um, so that's kind of what you get with the box goggle, but you don't get with the binocular goggle. So this one, you are gonna get a fairly big screen, but the the disadvantage is that it's very up in your face. And so it's a little bit hard to describe when you're looking at this um, without looking at it. But when you're looking through the goggles, the box goggles, the screen is very, very big. Let's talk screen size for a moment. So the box goggle, this particular one, the Skyland Vision, is a five inch screen. And this Skyzone O2C is a three inch screen. Five inch, three inch. So that size difference is fairly dramatic. So again, when you're looking through this, you know, a beginner would think that the bigger screen, the better. And that's true if you're only viewing and not necessarily participating. Because then, because you have the, I guess, the option or the, the choice to really look around the screen as someone else is flying or driving a vehicle. So you have that luxury. Um, whereas when you're the one controlling the vehicle, you need to be, you know, on your game, depending on how risky you are with your maneuvers or, or what you're going through or how delicate your, your quad or your RC cars. Um, so for screen size, this is immensely larger. I mean, five inch screen, it fills up the entire view. It's, it's, it's really cool actually. So when you're looking through that, um, at first glance, it may be kind of disappointing that you're going from a five inch to a three inch, but the three inch screen for these Skyzone O2Cs is a lot more clear versus this. Um, and the fact that it's smaller, it just, it just also feels more clear, but specification-wise it is. You may have heard from a lot of FPV flyers um, that they don't wanna be looking around side to side in the screen. They wanna kinda of see everything in the middle and then kind of their peripheral vision. With this, it's beyond your peripheral vision, so you are kind of looking back and forth. So as a spectator, this is great. Um, for someone who's interested in FPV and just wants to know what you're up to, to look at it for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, any longer than that, for any longer than a, a casual use, I think you're gonna want a screen that is smaller and that does appear further away. Generally, you'll get a clearer picture with the binocular style goggles. So that is the main difference. Um, one thing for me, if you've seen my other YouTube videos, I wear glasses. Um, I wore contacts today. Uh, I normally wear glasses if I, if I can, if uh, I don't need to wear sunglasses, the weather's good. Uh, with the COVID-19, I actually uh, used up a lot of my daily contact lenses. So I've been wearing a lot of uh, glasses lately. And glasses do not fit um, in here. I can pull these out a little bit and the frames kind of fit in. But as I'm wearing this, it, the pressure puts a lot of pressure on my nose and it's very uncomfortable. I can sometimes get it to a point where I can stand it and kind of look through it but you know anything past 15 minutes is a little bit difficult with glasses and this is not designed for glasses um, there are box goggles that are designed for glasses that you can fit through um, which would be nice if that's something you're looking for um, these days box goggles good ones are going to be anywhere between 80 and I'd say a hundred dollars. Um, Fat Shark did come out with their own model that I think is at 199, so 200 bucks, um, which gets kind of close to the 250, 350 range of the binocular goggles. So people start to kind of question whether they really want to do that. I haven't had any experience with Fat Shark directly, but I do hear that there's great customer service, and so there's there's reasons to kind of go by that name. My FPV experience has been strictly RC cars, and that was as of recently. Um, I did purchase this with a Walkera Rodeo 150, 
and this was about three years ago. Um, and I, at the time, I didn't, re I didn't learn about how you can change rates in beta flight and clean flight and all that. So I had a hard time with the twitchiness of the controls for that. And just only recently dug back into it, uh, pulled out of my closet maybe a couple weeks ago and uh, ordered some new batteries. So we're going to get that going. But my experience has been with RC cars only. Um, so my, so with RC cars, the range of RC cars does not exceed the range of this. So basically there's really no reason for me to get extended range of this if the, the item or the RC car that I'm operating is not going to be beyond it. So for that use, this is perfectly fine. It doesn't need diversity. You don't need special antennas. I mean, anything you get for a few bucks is going to be okay. One thing about this particular this model, the Kylan Vision, and it's been an issue for a lot of owners for a long, long time, is that even when you turn off the, these goggles, it constantly uses battery. And so in, I found that in, in eight days, um, the battery depleted by about half. So, and that's just sitting there with it being complete off. So that's kind of annoying. Um, this, this cover plate here is pretty rigid and it's hard to, to kind of pull off with just your finger. So you do need a tool. Uh, key's not gonna be thin enough, so you're gonna have to bring a legit tool to really open this up. Um, to charge it, you can charge with the micro USB on the side which I have done. When you go to the FPV binocular goggles, I mean, it looks pretty sweet. <laughs> I mean, this is the SkyZone O2C. So it, it looks like it's O2X because it has a camera, but this is just the shell. I have a feeling that SkyZone just had too many of these shells and they just reuse them. This camera here is not actually operable. So for my face and fit, I mean, I have a fairly large nose. I like to think my, my head shape is a little bit more narrow. Or at least it is for motorcycle helmets. Um, but for some reason, this angle of the goggle fits me very tight. So I feel like it needs to be a little bit wider to actually attach to my face well. I do get some light leak uh, down under the nose, um, despite me having the biggest nose in the world. So that's a little odd. Um, but when you, but the experience of looking through this, I had concerns about the IPD because. IPD range for this is 59 to 69 and my IPD is 60 and a half so I'm on the very low range and barely making um, the IPD uh, range for this but I found out when I put it on it does work for me okay so if you're really gonna spend seven times as much for the binocular goggles and, and granted this is a budget pair versus box goggles seven times you really need to figure out what the reason is and if it's really worth it and so if you're going to be just doing this casually you're not a tinker or collector of gadgets <laughs> then you're going to want something a little bit more you're going to be a little bit more value conscious not that i'm not this has been kind of a budget channel for uh since since i've started um but you're getting you're getting the experience with the box goggle and before getting the binocular goggles, I was considering getting another pair of box goggles. And this would have been the Isheen EV600DM, which does have diversity and all has, also has a DVR. And it's wide enough also in the opening for glasses. So that pretty much satisfied everything that I was looking for, all for a hundred bucks. And so, if I did not have this pair, I think I would have, I think I would have done that. Um, the reason why I didn't end up getting that is because I think just the experience of having two box goggles, I felt was just too redundant. Um, so if I didn't have this, I think I still, I still would have started with box goggles. And some people may say long term, that's kind of a waste of money if you know you're going to get into the binocular goggles anyway. Um, but for some people, you know, for me, that, that, that's kind of hard to project that far. If I didn't have these already, I would still start with a value box goggle at about $100. Um, AliExpress has that EV 100 dm uh, for about $92, $88, something like that. Box goggles are maybe overlooked and undervalued in a sense that they're so dismissed because they're so entry level. Um, but, but there's a huge price difference. Again, I mean, for this versus this, we're talking seven times. I mean, this exact goggle you can get for 
And this was, for me personally, I bought this uh, just a few days ago for 360 plus tax. Um, it included shipping. Um, so, so we're looking at, at over seven times the cost of that versus this. And sometimes people think about portability as an issue. Um, so just to kind of show you the sizes, portability normally is an issue because you're not generally going to carry this in your hand with a quad or an RC car and just kind of get going. Generally, you may be taking it further out. You may be driving a car, you may be taking the bus or doing whatever, and you're going to have a backpack or a bag of some sort. And so the difference in size, I mean, on your face may seem extreme for these, but as you're bringing it about, it's really not that big of a difference. And the weight actually, I haven't done, I haven't put this on a scale, but I'm actually questioning whether this is actually lighter than this. I mean, there, there's a lot of, I mean, this is a box goggle, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of air in here. So there's, there's not a lot of stuff in here. Um, this is just a little bit more dense. As far as size, I don't think it's that big of a concern. A lot of it is, at least in the beginning, is gonna be more aesthetic. <laughs> To be frank, I think a lot of a lot of the attractiveness of the binocular goggles um, for people who are new are just that you know they just they just look so cool and they are they are um, versus something like this and so this is stickers are my attempt to make it look cool <laughs> but anyway size size isn't going to matter as far as as far as usage is going to be concerned um, I still will be using this extensively for people who want to watch what I'm doing with FPV. Um, I did order a uh, Tiny Hawk 2 so that, e by Emacs, so that's coming in soon, and we'll have more videos on that. But I did want to just kind of share the differences between box goggles versus binocular goggles, and not just specifications of each. But I know it is, it is a big purchase for a lot of people, as it was for myself as well. Another reason I didn't go to another box goggle is because I didn't know enough and I don't have enough experience to to determine whether I like the four by three aspect ratio versus the 16 by nine. And so this is a 16 by nine and that's all I know. So I'm thinking to me, I mean, just as an amateur four by three, it just seems smaller, boxier, not as cinema like, like how could that be better? Um, so by going with the Skyzone O2Cs, this actually can toggle between 16 nine and four three, which is nice and is not true of all um, binocular goggles. So if aspect ratio is something that's important to you or you're like me and you really don't know, then you may want to have, you may want to choose a pair of binocular goggles that has that option, especially right now <laughs> with the COVID-19 situation going on. Um, it's difficult, it's, it will be difficult and continues to be difficult to get into groups um, where you're going to be able to meet with people who FPV and be share and be sharing their goggles or anyone you know prior to COVID-19 I think you wouldn't have a hard time finding anyone who's um, willing to let you put a pair on you know without really questioning it um, unfortunately these days that that's going to be a little bit more tricky so you may have to kind of risk getting a pair yourself to try it so what do binocular goggles give you that the box goggles don't so number one is going to be the distance and again, as I mentioned earlier, um, if, you're, if you're doing RC cars, most people aren't going to do FPV RC cars. Um, th I'm sure there's a, a group of us, but it's not going to be major. If you're watching this, you're probably looking at it for quads. Um, so for distance, you really need to think about realistically what range you're really going to need. And if you don't feel like you're going to need huge range to need diversity, to, to penetrate through you know, concrete walls or go behind you in a different building, um, then you're not necessarily going to need to decide between, or you're not necessarily going to need a patch antenna and a regular antenna. You can really just have one or the other, depending on the type of flying you do. So my, my, my opinion or my suggestion is to really be honest with yourself about realistically what type of flying you're going to be doing and where you're going to be doing it. I know a lot of us, when we try to buy different products, we want kind of one thing that fits all situations so that we can have that option in the future um, but you know anything like with most things anything that is you know good at all things is not great at anything so 
if you're going to do that, you're not going to want to spend a ton of money on something that is kind of halfway decent on stuff you actually need. And so if the range fits, then this satisfies it. And if your usage time is not going to be beyond 15 minutes, I mean, batteries are going to only last like five minutes at a time. But if you're not the type to have a bunch of battery packs and be reloading your quad or RC car and then be watching this for, you know, hours, then having something like this, I think, would be just fine. Um, again, entry level, casual use, and there's nothing wrong with that. So those are the reasons to stick with the box goggles or to get a pair of new box goggles. Reasons to get this is if you know or suspect highly that you will be flying your FPV quad or driving your RC car vehicle for extensive periods of time. And I would say, this is subjective, but I would say that you're, doing, you're running more than one or two battery packs each time you use your quad or your RC car and that you're doing it at least once a week. That's subjectively, but you may want to ask yourself, you know, how often are you going to do it and each time, how long is each session? Um, as a dad, it's hard for me to get out sometimes for more than an hour at a time. Um, and I do, I do get motion sickness actually. So, so in a sense, I'm questioning, you know, how immersive do I want to be? <laughs> Should I really be into this? Um, but my, that's going to be my expectation as far as usage time. It's going to be running one, probably one or two battery packs um, for outdoor quad or RC cars. And then for indoor quad, um, I could probably do more just because my kids will be around me and they'll be safe and it'll be, you know, nighttime or whatever, or after they go to sleep, I'll have more time. Um, so, so again, you want to think about how long each session is and um, how often those sessions are. And as far as um, the range is concerned, just the type of site that you're going to be flying in. Fitment. Yes, fitment is a word. <laughs> so when my daughter put this on, we made this as tight as we could. And this tend to slide down her head. The new Skyzone 02, 03 O's, well, whatever is newer than 02C, um, has a wider strap, which I would imagine would fit and secure a little bit better. With Majority of boss goggles, if not all boss goggles, will have a middle strap. So when you're putting that on your head, this thing really does hold it and prevent it from sliding. Um, for this, you're going to need to you're going to need fitment um, to be pretty exact. And again, um, the IPD needs to match. And when you're putting it on, you are going to have to center it a lot better because it needs to match your IPD. Whereas for this. Is just it's just a large screen inside a box, so you're not going to need to match. You're not going to need to center it as closely. So there's a lot um, more tolerance with box goggles. You just slap them on and they work. For this, there's you know the whole fitment issue of you know whether this shape is going to match your eyes. You know how much light leakage matters for you um, based on your nose or your bridge or how wide your head is versus um, how they how they make these so fitment is going to have a lot less tolerance with this and so that may be a reason to shy away from it um, or take your bets when you're buying a you know a few hundred dollar product versus a fifty hundred dollar product back in the day the binocular goggles did not have fans so you're paying for a fan but question do you really need a fan like are you going to be using the goggles in the heat and long enough to even necessitate that. So like I mentioned before, if you're only gonna, if your experience or usage of RC, anything, is not gonna be hours on end or afternoons, then you're not gonna be really worried about sweating and fogging up and all that kind of stuff. So that's the reason why these, that's another reason why these don't have fans. Not only because it doesn't fit into the cost of making it and the people buying it, but the time that you're, spending with the box goggle doesn't really ne necessitate a fan at all. So that's another thing you want to think about as far as whether you want to go box goggle or if you already have box goggle and whether you want to get into binocular goggles and whether that kind of fits your lifestyle. So this hobby of RC, whether it's quadcopters or RC cars or planes or whatever, all involve batteries. And so if you're really into this hobby, you're going to have loads and loads of batteries. 
um, oftentimes with different connectors and you may be soldering on your own, you may not want to go through the trouble of that. So the battery type and usage is something to consider. Well, let's go over um, how the battery works for this. And by the way, the battery is not included in these box goggles. So that's an additional cost um, beyond the goggles themselves. So what comes with the goggle is this adapter. And so this plugs into the side of it. And when you see the guys with fat sharks, they have a, a case for their uh, proprietary batteries that fit on the band itself and the whole thing is just a single unit that goes on your head. I don't like the weight of it and so I do use this cord, this long cord, and it's an X6, XT60 connector and basically it plugs in the battery and the battery sits in my pocket. So when you're wearing this, it's you do have a cord you know, dangling the side of your head. Um, as far as the battery that I chose, you can. this is compatible with any battery that is 2S to 6S. So I happen to have a 1500 milliamp hour 3S battery, and this is not specific to this goggle, or I did not buy it specifically for this goggle. Um, if I did, it would have been a lot narrower and probably lighter, but I did want to reuse in a, a battery that I had existing, and this is for an RC car. So when I'm, so I like having, I guess, fewer things to kind of keep things a little bit more simple. I don't necessarily like things that are too dedicated for certain applications. So I can use this for an RC car when I want to use it for an RC car. And when I want to use it for the goggles, then I can use it for goggles as well. So that's something to think about. Whereas the battery for the box goggle is, we're going to call it proprietary because at least for this one, the battery bay is very shallow and will accommodate only a specific dimension battery, which I found very hard to find, um, especially with something that is a, long, a large enough milliamp hour for you to get enough runtime for it. So again, that's something you may want to think about as far as the battery type and how that applies to whether you have box goggles or binocular goggles. Some final thoughts. So box goggles, my take on it is that they're very undervalued and underappreciated. So if you're questioning whether you think box goggles are good enough, chances are they probably are. So it's when you're going to, gog with going to binocular goggles, the question is more of, what type of binocular goggles and whether you're going to spend 300 or you're going to spend 400 or more. Um, if you're thinking about value and usage and most people are not going to necessarily have the necessarily going to need the range that a box goggle cannot already provide. It, it, it takes a lot of convincing to, to really go from a box goggle to a binocular goggle. If you're worried about the look of this, just know that, at least in my experience in the Bay Area, um, I belong to a drone club where I, I fly uh, the DJI Mavic Pro with a bunch of folks. The community here at least is very, very friendly. And so no one is going to be looking down on you because, oh, you don't have the latest Fat Shark or, oh, your Fat Sharks aren't, you know, HDOs, they're only Sky Zones or E-Sheens. Like, if you think that, that's mostly going to be in your head. It's not really going to be reality. Um, one of the people who actually got me excited about FPV and RC and drones in general was someone I met from a local drone club. And he actually had a pair of box goggles. And these were the early model Ishins. And he would wear these himself. And so, you know, the professionals or people who are really into it will still wear these and will still share with them, sh share them with you. Um, so if you're trying to fit in or something like that, I don't think, personally, I don't think that's a big enough reason to go with the binocular goggle because the community is really nice and it's, it's not that competitive. Um, again, in the Bay Area where I live, it's, it may be different in other states, regions, countries. Um, but from what I found that the community um, in this hobby is very willing to help and very willing to, to share and uh, get other people into the hobby and, and, and really get excited about it. So um, again, undervalued, underappreciated. If you don't have a pair of anything, then I would, I, I would still really recommend getting a good pair of box goggles. And again, that would be the Ishin EV800DM for $100. So one thing I was contemplating before getting my binocular goggles was what am I going to do with these box goggles? And so I don't, I didn't want to put it to a waste and you know, they're not worth anything as far as selling. Um, but I do plan to use this, 
um, quite a bit, um, quite extensively. So I do have, I do have kids, um, friends, family. My my parents actually have tried this, and and this is really good for not having to set up um, with the IPD. It may be specific to people's faces, their shape, and you know how close their eyes are together, and just the fitment. And then you may have to pull the battery out of your pocket and then give it to them. Whereas this, you just adjust the straps, put it on, and they're good to go. And so it's very easy to kind of to give other people who aren't familiar with the hobby that aha moment. And so I will be keeping this and I will be using it a lot um, with other guests and, and things like that. The binocular goggles will replace this as my primary set. I will be open about sharing this, sharing this with people if our drone meets um, come up again. Uh, hopefully it does after this COVID-19. So with me loving the Boss goggles so much and saying how it's great value, um, you may wonder why I decided to take the plunge and, and get the binocular goggles. So I do plan to be in the hobby for an extended period of time. Um, as a dad, uh, you may or may not know that it's, it's hard to get some alone time sometimes. And so although FPVing is great as a community type of thing where you're flying with other people, you're all in the same field and you kind of spend, you know, half day out there, it's also good, I feel, for kind of a solo activity where you just pop these on, you lean back, and then you do your own thing, you're, you're in your own little world. I plan to fly this primarily at first with a Tiny Hawk 2 indoor quad um, after the kids go to sleep, 9 p.m. and later. So that kind of gives me that um, that hobby, that kind of way out, that, not way out, that doesn't sound good, but, <laughs> but that'll give me some, some of that alone time. And so I do, I do plan to use this quite extensively. I will be f flying a Walkera Rodeo 150. That's a, you probably ne may have never heard of that. It's a three to four year old, um, quadcopter that I'm going to be pulling out of the closet. And I've recently bet purchase new batteries for them and so I'll be playing around with the rates in, in uh, clean flight or beta flight and adjusting that to my liking and then getting a little bit more involved in the hobby. If you have any questions about anything I said um, I just want to kind of throw all that out there to, to kind of let you know where I'm coming from as far as um, box goggles versus, versus binocular goggles.